Good morning, YouTube. What's going on? It's Moto Tigress, and I've been getting a ton of questions about my commuting life on my bike. So I figured this was as good a time as any to talk about my gear that I prefer to use when I'm commuting. Obviously, the weather in Texas is good to commute basically year round, but now that we're in spring, the weather's getting really nice. There's a lot more people thinking about potentially commuting their bikes. So I just wanted to talk through a little bit of um, my gear selection and kind of how I arrived where I did. So being a woman rider, I kind of wanted to put this video together because I know we don't have as many choices for gear and it's a lot harder to find information for riders like me. So I thought maybe this might be helpful to some other women riders out there here who are either just starting or just starting to commute and are looking for a little bit of inspiration on how to pick their gear. So first and foremost, you'll notice that I'm standing with the CB500F. I kind of used this as the visual aid since it's probably the most simple bike and the most needy when it comes to commuting because I don't have the wind protection and the heated grips and heated seats and all those other good things that I have with the Tiger. This video isn't supposed to be about bikes for commuting, but uh, I will say the CB500F has been excellent for commuting. So if you're putting a list together of bikes to consider, I would definitely include this one on your list. So first we'll talk about a jacket. I am wearing what has become my favorite commuting jacket. This is the Revit Sand 4 H2O, and it is an awesome all-arounder jacket. About the only thing I can't use it for is commuting in the Texas summer. I have a fly racing mesh jacket that works really well for that, but this jacket really does just about everything. What's great about this jacket is the exterior is not actually waterproofed. It comes with a separate waterproof liner that you install into the jacket. That means this jacket can breathe a little better, but you don't lose the waterproofing protection when you really need it. It's super fast to zip in the waterproof layer, and you can also use your warmer quilted layer along with the waterproof layer. So you're just covered for no matter what kind of weather you come across. So this is a fantastic commuter jacket for that reason. A lot of times I'm heading into work before the sun even comes up, so I use that quilted liner a good chunk of the year. And it's really nice to be able to just pull it out, throw it in my desk at work, and then put it in my backpack on the way home. Similarly, with the waterproof liner, I usually will check the weather the night before or the morning that I go out. And if I think there's a chance of rain that's going to be heavy, then I'll go ahead and chunk that waterproof liner in my backpack in case I want to use it on the commute home. If I'm being honest though, I almost never take it because this jacket, even though it's not waterproofed on the exterior, keeps me dry for most of my ride home, which is pretty short. It's only about 10 or 15 minutes, depending on traffic. The next piece of gear we'll talk about is probably your most important piece of gear, and that's your helmet. I have talked a lot about helmets on this channel, and I am mostly riding in my Arai Corsair X and in my Scorpion R1 Air Carbon. And I'm here to tell you, after about a year of riding both of those helmets, I do have a favorite, and it's the Scorpion. All I'll say today is that this has been the perfect all-rounder helmet. It's great for summer, it's great for winter, it's the most comfortable helmet, and it's the one that I tend to reach for when I'm going riding. So it has definitely taken the place as my primary commuter helmet. I think when you're looking for a commuter helmet, comfort is going to be king. But you're also looking for a helmet that can do year-round duty and do those cold mornings and also those really hot afternoons sitting at stoplights on your way home. My only gripe with this helmet is that I may or may not have to switch between a clear or a tinted visor depending on if we're in daylight savings time or not, which that's going to go away soon enough or at least we're not going to have to flip back and forth anymore. Um, Typically, I would just get away with the tinted visor in the mornings, but that's not recommended. I would love to see a dynamic visor on this that would actually self-tint. I know a couple other folks are doing that, um, so maybe Scorpion will make a visor for this helmet that does that as well. I think that would be a really cool solution. Otherwise, you might look at some of the helmets that have a flip-down sun visor interior to the helmet. And there's a lot of selection on the market for those kind of helmets as well. Also great for your commuting is the Senna. I have a 50S. I absolutely love it. 
I end up taking calls on the way to work or on the way home from work pretty often. It's really seamless with this. And if I'm not taking calls, I'm talking to my writing buddy or I'm listening to music. So honestly, I don't know how anybody gets along without a Bluetooth at this point in time. It's extremely convenient and I'd highly recommend any commuter to consider getting one. Another piece of gear that I went through a lot of iterations to find something I like is the boots. My primary commuter boot now, and really my primary daily boot, no matter what kind of riding I'm doing, is the Alpine Stars SMX 6. So I went through a lot of boots before I arrived at this one. I also did some of the Forma kind of high top sneaker designs, which were more casual and maybe a little easier to walk around in, but didn't provide as much protection. Once I decided that protection was really important, I first bought a pair of Alpine Stars SMX S's, which are basically this boot, but they're not track ready. The SMS X is a great all rounder boot if you're never gonna go on the track. And honestly, I could have gotten away with it. And it's a really comfortable boot. But I decided I wanted a pair of boots that would give me top tier protection and I could use them when I'm ready for track days. Two birds, one stone which is why I went up to the SMX-6. Now these are a little bit on the, I guess, extreme side for a commuter, especially for such a short commute on a relatively tame motorcycle. And at first I felt really silly wearing like a top end, you know, like kind of track boot. But then I realized there's no reason to feel bad about protecting yourself to the greatest extent you possibly can. So that's another thing to consider when you're commuting. Also, these boots have held up really well. They're good rain or shine. These are perforated and I've been caught in some rain and it still didn't get into my boot on a 10 or 15 minute ride. So, you know, I think they're pretty good all around our boots. If you live somewhere where precipitation is a lot heavier or it gets a lot colder, you might wanna consider a more waterproofed boot rather than something like this that's perforated for the summer. Now what this means when I'm wearing these in on my commute is that I usually have a pair of flats that I'm chunking in my backpack so that I can change out my footwear when I get to my office. Luckily my desk has some storage space and I can actually fit my riding boots under my desk so they're out of the way. I'll also note that I have a pretty long hike to get from my bike up to my desk, including going up a couple flights of stairs. And these things are super comfortable for all of that. So I think they're a great commuter boot for anyone working in an office scenario. Now, as for riding pants, it's a little bit of a mixed bag for me. I work in an office environment where I'm mostly wearing slacks, but sometimes I'm wearing jeans. And I'll typically just wear my work wear for the day. If I'm wearing jeans, I don't typically wear some kind of over pants because my commute is pretty short, although I should and really I should be looking at a pair of riding jeans that are either somewhat appropriate for the office or that I can change out of. But I do have a pair of fly racing dirt pants that I'll sometimes use as an overpant, especially in the winter when it's cold. I just slip them right over my work slacks for a little bit of extra comfort and protection. There's a lot more brands coming out with more professional looking protective gear for women, especially in the pants department. So definitely take a look at something like the Go Go Girl legging or an equivalent that's being offered by some of the bigger names, such as those that you'll find on Revzilla. Another piece of kit that I found to be extremely important and I went through a ton of them is gloves. I probably have, I don't know, at least 10 pairs of gloves and some of them I've just found I don't really like and so I don't really wear them anymore. Others I use for certain purposes and not others. Having gloves that you like on a commute makes a big difference, not only in comfort and protection, but usability with your electronic. You'll see that on my bike, I have a quad lock and I do have my smartphone on my bars and I do like to use it when I'm riding to a limited extent. Having gloves that has the uh, capacitive touch capability and the fingertip is really important. Luckily, there's a lot of gloves on the market that are offering that technology. So make sure you look for it if you're looking for a good pair of commuter gloves. Right now, my favorite gloves are the Scorpion Vortex Air. Now these are a good kind of lightweight summer duty glove, but I wear them almost year round except for the coldest winter time. And even then, sometimes I wear them and I'll just wear one of the thin glove liners, which I highly recommend 
getting a pair of those as well. They're really cheap. You can put them under any of the gloves you have and it'll help keep your fingers warm. But yeah, I really like these gloves. They're the most comfortable. Um, I also run a couple different pairs of Alpine Stars gloves. My favorite glove from the Alpine Stars offering for summer is currently the Stella Shore. It's a super lightweight glove. It's not going to be the most protective, but in the Texas summers, it's second to none in my opinion as far as comfort is concerned. My only gripe with those gloves is that they tend to wear out pretty quickly. I've already been through two pairs of those and I'm still on my first pair of Vortex Airs and they have not worn out yet. The Velcro has kept up, um, so I'm really happy with these. I also tend to prefer the short glove as opposed to the gauntlet style glove. I think that's just a function of the jackets that I'm traditionally wearing and how I'm using them. Obviously, if I'm going to go to a track day, I'm going to be wearing a gauntlet, but for commuting, um, the short gloves do it for me. Another piece of gear that I absolutely cannot live without on my commute is an ID armband. I work somewhere that requires me to show an ID to a gate guard before I go to work that day and I'm still on my bike. And the first couple times I tried to fumble with my lanyard and pulling it out of my jacket, I decided to get one of these on Amazon. Um, I wear it on the left arm and my ID goes in. It's really easy so that when I'm going through the gate, the ID has the orange band. It's very salient to the guy that's looking for it. He sees the ID and waves me through. That way I don't have to come to a stop. So yeah, if you work somewhere that requires IDs to be shown, absolutely get one of these. It is a night and day experience for a rider. I also keep a neck gaiter in a pocket or in a bag because depending on the weather, I may need it coming in in the morning when it's cooler or not. And sometimes they're nice to use to keep my hair back or whatever. They're a very versatile piece of kit, so I would definitely recommend having one in your commuter kit. Now you'll notice this morning I've got some sunglasses on my face. This is actually a good alternative if you're wearing a helmet that has a clear shield. You prefer to wear that in in the morning. Make sure you find a helmet though that is sunglasses friendly. My Scorpion R1 is very sunglasses friendly, so if I wanted to run a clear visor, and then just throw some sunglasses on for the commute home. It's definitely comfortable and doable in that helmet. I think one of the most convenient pieces of kit you can get for your commute is a good tank bag. I don't really have a recommendation on a tank bag. There's so many of them out there. Just look for ones that, you know, suit your needs. But I prefer to have a smaller tank bag that's going to fit just what I need to walk into work. This is typically where my gloves go my phone, my key, and any other small bits and pieces that I want to carry into work. I've also found the tank bag to be really useful if you hit a drive through or something like that on the way home and you just need somewhere to stuff something really quickly before you move your bike again. It's a lot easier than having to pull over, get your backpack off, and do whatever you're going to do. So yeah, definitely consider a good tank bag. I prefer a tank bag that's just magnetic, so you just stick it on the bike and go, rather than one that has to be strapped down to the bike. Traditionally, you're only seeing that on like dirt bikes or adventure bikes or something like that, but uh, if convenience matters to you, I think going into work, it would be a huge pain in the butt to have to like unstrap your tank bag before you go in. So yeah, a good magnetic tank bag, I think pays dividends for the average commuter. Another piece of gear that I found to be absolutely critical for my commute was a good backpack. Right now I'm using an Osprey Daylight Plus and I have found it to be a really good lightweight multi-use pack. What was important for me when picking a bag was something that had a laptop compartment, didn't weigh a ton, and had just enough storage to carry only what I needed to get into work. Traditionally, what's going in this bag for me is going to be my laptop, a change of shoes, maybe some other things like a hairbrush, makeup bag, snacks. And another benefit to this pack is you have the external mesh part where you can stick your coffee mug or your water bottle. I found that this bag also breathes really well. I don't really feel it back there. I don't feel it getting hot on my back. And I think that's partially because it's highly perforated and it's a very lightweight pack, as you can see. Um, it also has the water bladder storage compartment. So on hot days, I do put a bladder in there and I'll run a camel back over the front um, and wrap it through here so that I have water if I need it. I want to also mention getting a pack that has the chest strap 
is really important on a motorcycle because it keeps your straps from maybe slipping off of your shoulder or otherwise bouncing around. It keeps the pack just tighter to your body. Um, and I tried a couple other backpacks that didn't have a chest strap and like it, I immediately just got rid of those bags. I thought um, it just didn't really make sense on the bike. So this pack I think is really awesome. I know there are some motorcycle dedicated packs that are supposed to be ergonomically designed for the rider. Definitely try some of those out, but if you don't want something that's motorcycle specific and you can use for other things like I did, check out the Osprey Daylight packs. I think they're really good for this purpose too. Another absolute must for my commute is my Brewmate mugs. I wish I could say I was sponsored by Brewmate, but I'm not. I just absolutely love these things. They have this cool locking top, and it is the only thing I have found so far that doesn't find a way to unlock or leak. I literally just chunk these in, in my backpack or in the side of the pack where the mesh is. I've even put them in my tank bag and they just get sloshed around the whole way and they never leak. So they're really excellent for your coffee and they also work to keep like ice cold water cold. Yeah, if you're looking for just a good all around purpose mug and you don't know what to buy because there's a bajillion of them on the market, I highly recommend the Brewmates. So Brewmate, if you're out there and you hear me, I would love to be your moto ambassador. I also mentioned earlier that I have a quad lock on my bar. I used to have a ram mount X mount and I absolutely hated it. The rubber band on it broke like after three rides. I was seeing quad lock uh, used by a lot of riders and so I just decided to spring for one and I have to tell you it's definitely the best mount that I've come across. I have them on all my bikes. Um, it works really well. It's really convenient to use. I haven't had any issues with the iPhone damage from the vibration. I do have their quad lock vibration dampener installed on all of my bikes. But even before I had that installed, I still didn't get any kind of camera damage to my phone. So not to say it can't happen, but I've had a really good experience with my quad locks. Even just as a phone case, not considering the quad lock functionality, it's been really good. I drop my phone all the time and I haven't had any issues with the case. So highly recommend Quadlock. Definitely take a look at them if you haven't already. And a lot of YouTubers I think are probably sponsored by them. So go hunt around and you'll probably be able to find a discount code for Quadlock. So I think we've covered just about all of the important pieces of kit to look at for a commuter. Honestly, it's gonna be trial and error no matter what you're doing. Uh, you won't be able to just go out and buy all the things that I talked about today and then have a perfect commuting setup for you. I have found it to be perfect for me as a daily commuter. It gives me enough versatility without having to be too overly specific for each mission to where I have to have a closet absolutely full of gear. Now I did go through a lot of gear to get to this point. so. Um, unfortunately, it's a little bit of an expensive endeavor to figure out what it is that you prefer and you need if you're going to be a motorcycle commuter. But that being said, it's totally doable to arrive to a pretty reasonable solution. And I have to tell you, commuting on my motorcycle absolutely changed my entire work experience. I'm in a much better mood when I get to the office. I feel like I have a better day every day that I roll in on my motorcycle. And it's just another way to enrich your life and find excuses to ride on two wheels. I also found that commuting made me increase my skills a lot faster than if I had just stayed being a weekend rider when I was first starting out. I started commuting with less than 20 miles under my belt. Now I did have a riding buddy to kind of help me out and make sure I was safe, but I think my skills increased a lot faster because I was commuting. I was exposed to a lot of other scenarios faster because I was commuting. And again, it just gave me another reason to ride even more and then grow my skills faster. So yeah, I don't see any negatives to commuting unless you're someone that just has to carry a ton of stuff with them to work. Uh, I think just about any bike could be commuted. I was commuting on my CRF 250 before I got the CB500. You know, I commute every once in a while on the Tiger 900 as well, which is even more comfortable. And obviously you have more luggage solutions on the larger bikes, but any bike can be a commuter bike. So don't feel like, oh, I'm on a dual sport. That's completely impractical to take to the office. Totally not impractical. I encourage everybody to think about moto commuting. Do it at least a couple times and see if you like it. But I guarantee you, if you're a rider, you're gonna enjoy it. 
So since we've covered everything, I guess I'll wrap up this video now. Leave a comment below if you have another piece of gear that you would recommend for the moto commuter, or if you have any other questions about any of the gear that I talked about today and you'd like more details about it. I love to connect with each and every one of y'all. So yeah, so I look forward to hearing from you guys. So with that, until next time, ride safe.